I'm going to grab a tonsil, a sterile tonsil plant, and kind of uh, see if I can grab anything because I can't see anything. Yeah, it looks I know. It's really clean right now. I don't smell any foul odor at all. It doesn't look like curion. It looks like a chronic draining bursal uh, sac. Um, yeah, I'm know. not seeing anything. Like, I know your hip is not a hip on that side. Um, and it wouldn't be out of this world for there to be some residual retaining bone fragments, but the neat part about our body is that it recognizes this and thinks something that it doesn't like and tries to get rid of it. Um, but if you're not feeling sick, not having periodic drainage, not having increased autonomic dysfunction, something that you can detect as being an uh, abnormality. You mean like jumpy legs and stuff like that? Uh, so what I've heard of is people have either nausea, sweating, Dizziness, uh, and they don't really relate pain, but they relate to these what we call autonomic symptoms, you know, that are blood pressure misregulation, um, sweating uh, misregulation. Well, he did have that once he had the uh, infection. But Yeah. And just wanted to seal it up. Uh, but he said there was a huge failure rate. 85%. Yeah. 
So unless he saw the need for the bone scraping, he really wants to stay away from okay. it. Okay. Uh, and mm -hmm. you know, this is we're kind of operating on similar experiences here, mm -hmm. and it's a very unrewarding scenario. Um, you know, if you go in there and you do all this work and all these procedures, you put usually that morbidity. Um, Yeah. I think one of the things that they were concerned about was that the the uh, maybe a bone infection. Um, but saying that it's not there. I also don't know that it's kind of a tough deal because we see that all the time. And there's always some sort of an associated bone. Some change too. I'm just telling you what I see right now, right here. You know, yeah. Pristine wound with no periods. X-rays that don't show any big loose bone fragments. And a person who's telling me that they're not having a ton of autonomic stuff that lets me know that you're probably not unwell. That's good. That's double negative. So you're probably well. <laughs> Which is good. We like to hear.
just the presence of inflammation secondary to bacteria of a bone. But there's a difference between bone that your body can defend and bone that is indefensible. The bone that is indefensible can progress to sepsis and an infection that your body can get rid of. Bone that has a blood supply that just has some of this reactive edema, reactive changes, is normal healthy bone that should be in the area of this inflammatory process. Okay. So, is it osteomyelitis? Sure. Does that matter? No. Because what matters is, is, is it undefensible bone? Is it dead bone that's sitting in a pocket of tissue that your body can get rid of? I think you're probably going to have a little bit of edema on there. Although you've got an MRI, there's just some edema in there. And edema is just fluid signal in the bone that's consistent with inflammation. But they can't tell the difference. They see this big sore, they see this drainage. And so the, there's a the osteomyelitis gets people excited. Uh, and you prove rightfully so because it's hard to get rid of. But you have tissue covering the bone, there's no exposed bone. And if you have a little fragment in there that you need to get rid of, then your body can care of it, and that's what it does. Um, and you may have episodes where you develop some little local sepsis, little pocket of tissue forms that doesn't drain very well. And occasionally, I've had to go in and you know open up those spaces and allow them in secondary areas to drain. And Dr. Larson and I would work together if that happened. Because if I have to make a big whack to do that, then might as well take some local tissue and rotate it down the area. Thank you. 